Okay. Uh, so last week, we created the player scene, and we put all that together, and where we stopped was adding a script. Um, we did download some scripts last week, uh, but they actually are a little more... I, I forgot that we need a simpler script for this week, so I'm just going to um, put a link to that script. Uh, it's right here. Um, we actually don't need this whole script. So let me, I'm just going to copy this whole script, the parts that we need, which is pretty simple. And I'm going to put that in Discord. So I'm going to copy this and then go over to the MMP270 Discord channel. And uh, this is a script we need for the player example. And I'm just going to paste this whole script directly in here. Um, and this way we can go over, we won't be doing a lot of scripting, at least to start in the class, but we can at least go over how you would create a script so we can continue to see how these projects are structured. Um, so I'll put a link to this in the voice chat as well to make it easier to get to, but I want to put it in the main channel so that it's um, there. So I'll put that here. Um, okay. So uh, now let's go back into where we were before. Um, so uh, I'm just going to open Godot and go straight into my uh, project from there. Um, so if you don't have a project right now, or you lost your project or something like that, we can go over it in a little bit. Um, and Or you can go review the videos and get set up from there. Um, so the easiest way, I'm just going to type in Godot into my search bar uh, on the computer. Um, this is obviously on a Windows. You can do the same thing with a Spotlight on Mac, uh, which is the little magnifying glass in the top right corner. I'm going to open up Godot. And you can see my game is still here in my projects. Um, if you open the project manager and you don't see your game, uh, you may need to make sure that your file's in the right place or uh, you know, uh, that you're on the right computer or something like that. Um, or you can create a new project uh, if you follow the steps in the lab. So uh, you may need to do that. Um, but if you do have your project still here, you can just click on Edit. Um, or you can select it and hit enter. So I'm going to click edit, and that should open it up in Godot. And so it's not going to open to any particular scene. So I have to go back to my scene and open up my first scene. And so here's the scene we created last week, and here's the little player scene we created. Um, I was demonstrating this modulate thing, but I'm just going to turn this off. And so the last little bit of this tutorial is just uh, making this player move around. And there's a few components, there's a few parts to that that we have to go over. Um, so remember to find the player scene. If you click on the player in Godot, there's this little scene icon. And if you click on that, it's going to open it in a new tab. And so you can edit that player scene. Um, and then once we are done editing it, we can go back to our main scene, which is just called my first scene, because this is just kind of a little demo. And then if you set your uh, folders up like I did, the player, if you look under scenes, you should see your first scene here, and then inside the components folder, that's where the player is. So the player is a component that we're going to put in multiple different scenes. OK. So what we're going to do now is step seven in the lab, uh, which is to add the player script to the player. Um, so later on, we're going to use a, a script that has like physics and stuff like that to make the player jump and do other things. But for now, we just want to get the basic movement down. Um, and so we're going to just add in this script. And so let's go over how to add a script to an object. Um, so we're going to go to the player scene. So I want to make sure that I'm on my player tab. Again, if I'm on my main scene that I'm editing, I can select the player and then click on this little clapboard uh, scene icon to open the player scene itself. And so now I want to add a script. 
Um, and we haven't added any, any scripts. So we have the scripts folder down here, but there's no scripts in there. So that's what we're going to do now. If I click on the player, it highlights the player over in the inspector. And I want to click on this main node at the top here. And over in the inspector, if I scroll down, the very last field is the script field. And that's where I can add a script to this uh, scene in my game. I can add multiple scripts, so each one of my nodes can have separate scripts. But I'm just going to start with my main node. And a script is basically a short program that will determine the behavior of the player. So I'm going to click on the empty here. And I'm going to click New Script. So sometimes you'll be clicking the Load button if you're using a script that's already in the Assets folder. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to be creating a new script. So when you create a new script, this little dialog box opens up. And there's a couple things that you have to be careful about here if you're creating a new script. Most of the time in a lot of the lessons, we'll just be attaching already existing scripts. Um, but just to go over how this process works, um, the first thing that you might want to change is the template. If you use the default template, it has some code already in it that's going to tell you, you know, some basics about how the code works. That's good if we're you know, starting off on our own. But for now, we already have a script that we want to put in here. So I'm going to change this to empty. So there'll be no code inside the script when I open it. And then the next part is this path. And the path is going to default to where your component is. So you can see it's in scene slash component slash player. But we want to keep our folders organized. So we don't want our scripts to be next to our components. So I'm going to click on the folder here. And I'm going to use the up arrow to go back a couple times to my main resources folder. And then I'm going to double click on my scripts folder. And the file is called player.gd. Um, what I want to call this is actually playercontroller.gd. Usually, it doesn't really matter that much because whatever you name it, it will be attached to the player once you hit open. Um, but the reason I like to name it player controller is because it's a little bit more specific about what the script is being used for. Um, so it controls the player's movement and animations. Uh, and so if I have other scripts that are related to the player, um, then if I had one script that was just called player, it might be kind of ambiguous which script I wanted to use. So I like to try to use uh, very specific um, naming conventions uh, when I name my files and my scripts and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to click Open and then click Create. And that brings me to this new uh, scripting window, which we haven't really seen before. Um, I'm going to make the font size a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to the code font and bump that up to 20. Um, I, actually, I'm going to make it even bigger than that, probably like 24. OK. And so the first thing that we see is there's this line that says extends kinematic body 2D. So let's talk about that for a second, but we're not going to go into too much detail. So this word extends is a shorthand in uh, the Godot scripting language to say that it takes on the functionality of this other type of node which is a kinematic body 2D. Um, and kinematic body 2D, as I mentioned in the previous uh, video or class, is just a body in the game that can work with physics, like gravity and bouncing and other things like that. One thing that's really, really nice about the Godot environment is if I right click on this word here, there's a little uh, button at the bottom of this menu called lookup symbol. And if I click on there, this stuff is probably going to be kind of confusing at first because you probably haven't seen much scripting before. But this is called uh, a reference or a documentation. And this tells me everything I need to know about how this particular uh, type of uh, object works. Um, and so this is one of the ways that we learn how to code. Uh, one major way that we learn how to code is by uh, viewing tutorials and you know learning from me or another teacher or watching YouTube videos. But if, some, if you're trying to do something and nobody else has done it before uh, or hasn't created a tutorial on it, then you need to use the reference and read through and figure out if this thing will do what I want it to do. So the nice thing about the Godot tutorial is that it actually, or this Godot reference, is it actually links to some different tutorials. So if I click on this first link, 
it'll actually take me to my browser and it'll take me to a tutorial uh, on the Godot documentation website that explains what this is for. And usually uh, it's kind of running slow. It'll usually have some examples with code and different things that show me how I can use uh, this particular object. So that's really convenient. Um, then it has the properties and methods. These are all the different things that the object can do. Uh, and then it has descriptions of all of these different properties and methods. So there's a lot of information in here. Uh, we won't go over, over all of it right now, um, but that's basically how the scripting area in Godot works. Um, so for now, I'm gonna replace this script with the script that I uh, pasted into Discord. So I'm gonna go back to Discord and I'm gonna click on this message and hopefully I can copy, can I copy the message? I can copy the message link and edit. Okay, I'll just have to select it with my mouse. So I'm just gonna select all this code and hit Control C to copy. And I'm gonna go back to Godot and I'm gonna hit Control V to paste. Uh, and my font size is a little big, so it may look a little bit different. Uh, but everything that we need for our very simple player uh, thing to work is right here. Um, so this isn't gonna work immediately. There's gonna be a little bit of an error, but I'm actually gonna show you guys what that looks like so you won't be confused when you see other errors in the future. Um, but before we get there, there's one thing I wanna show you guys. So in Godot, we'll get into this more when we do other types of scripting, but one of the really cool things about Godot and most of the other uh, game engines do this at this point, this little word here, export, what that means is that it gives us this value right here in the editor. Um, and so we can update that value without actually changing our code. And that's really useful because we can try different things, different values very easily as we're testing our game. It's also useful if you're collaborating, you might be working with a designer or somebody else who doesn't really know how to code. And so you can create export variables for them to edit without having to actually look at any of the scripts. Um, so that's a really nice feature of Godot. And so we'll see what that looks like. See, it says export, and then there's this thing called speed, and the value is 100. And so when I save this and I click on my player and go back to the 2D view, notice that in the inspector, there's this new property that wasn't there before. It's in this new area called script variables, and you can see its speed and its value is 100. So it matches what I wrote in my script. Um, this is actually, uh, let me edit that. about that. I forgot. These are not private variables. Oops. Okay. Anyway, back to Godot. Um, so instead, so while we're working on our game, if we want to test what it would be like if the player was twice as fast, we can just edit that number without having to go back into our script. And it also has this reset button, so we can reset it to the default value. Okay, so this script isn't gonna work uh, right away, but let's see what happens when I try to run it. So now we can see, when I go back to my main scene, here's my player, you can see the script that's attached to the player. And if I click on this little like scroll icon, it actually brings me to my code. Um, if I go back to my 2D scene, I'm gonna try to play the scene. I'm gonna use the play scene button. So there's a big play button here on the top right, but what that does is it actually builds your whole game. And that takes a little bit longer because it's going to do a bunch of different stuff. And that's not what I want to do right now. What I want to do is just see if this scene works. So I'm going to use this play scene button. And that's actually what I'm going to use like the majority of the time that I'm working on Godot. I'm only really going to use this button when I want to test the whole project. So I'm going to go back here and click on the play scene button. And you can see what's happening is we don't really see anything. It doesn't really work. Like I'm hitting the keys and nothing's really happening. Um, we do see my like little trees over here, but nothing's really changing here. Uh, and then you can see down here, there's this red thing called the debugger. And you can see this number next to debugger is getting bigger and bigger. Those are all the errors that I have in my script. So when, as you, you know, work on Godot projects, this happens all the time uh, in any programming project really. 
And so what we can do is click on the debugger down here, and this opens this little window. And we can even make this window bigger if we want to see. Um, and then we can go over to this errors tab. And we can see that basically what it's telling me is I haven't set up my actions. So that's the next thing that we need to do. I'm going to clear these errors. I'm going to set up my actions, and then we'll be ready to use um, and so this will happen from time to time. It's not the end of the world if things don't work the way you want them to. Um, in fact, it's pretty much what always happens when you're writing code. So the first thing you want to do is just take a look in the debugger and see if there's some errors and take a look at what those errors say. And the majority of the time, somebody else has gotten that error before too. So let's actually test this real quick. I'm going to run this again and then go to my debugger. And it says, is action pressed? The input map move right doesn't exist. And so I'm going to click on that, and can I, I'm going to copy the error, and I'm going to go into Google, and I'm going to paste the error. And I probably don't want to paste the whole thing because there's like a little too much inter information here. But let's just go to the main part of the error right here. And I also probably want to get rid of this because it's like specific to my game. OK, so now that I've gotten rid of a little bit of the extraneous information, we're, we are getting some results. Um, and so we can see people who have had this error in the past. Or you could also post it on Discord, and I'll take a look at it. But you, know, you basically want to see, what does this error mean, and how do I fix it? So I obviously know how to fix this error because I was anticipating it. And basically, what we need to do is set up our buttons for our game in Godot. This isn't done by default. Um, I do have like a blank template uh, version of a Godot game that has this built into it. So if you want to get started faster without having to set up all of this stuff from the beginning, you can download that. Um, I don't know if I have it linked here. No, I think I have it linked on the main labs page. Um, yes, this blank template project folder, that will have everything set up the way I'm going to set it up today. So you can kind of skip this step if you just want to start a new project and get started. Um, but we want to go over everything that we need to be able to. So let's go back to Godot. So the way we're going to tell, basically what we're doing is telling our script which buttons to use, because um, that's not always the same. So to do that, we go to Project and go to Project Settings. And in this tab next to the first general tab, there's a thing called the input map. And what you can do here is you can add different buttons and give them a name so that we can reference them in the code. So our code already has names for the buttons. Um, so we can use those, but you don't have to use those. I just made these up. You can name them whatever you want. But if they don't match your code, then they won't work. So to start, it's a good idea to match the code. So I use move right, move left, move up, and move down. So we just have to put those in and assign buttons to them. So the first action that we have is move right. So I'm going to add that. So I just type in the name of the action and then click add. Then I have move underscore left. And I'm using an underscore here because I can't use spaces in these names because it'll confuse the program. Um, so I just use an underscore to basically say like these are two different words. Um, but again, it just has to match the code. It doesn't really matter what you actually put there. Uh, then we say move underscore up and move underscore down. So now we've named these actions, and now we have to assign them to buttons. So once you see the move right down here, I can click on here and edit it if I want to. Um, and there's also a dead zone parameter, which uh, you probably don't really want to play with, but um, it's more for like joysticks to like basically determine how far uh, the sort of like dead zone in the middle is. But with our keys, obviously, we don't have that, so we can ignore that. Um, but when I click the plus next to the uh, move right that I just created, I'm going to get an option to add a key, a mouse button, um, or other types of buttons, like a joystick button. So I'm going to use a physical key. And for move right, I'm just going to move. I could do the right arrow. Um, and hit OK. But then I could also assign this to the D key if I wanted to use the WASD key. So you can assign as many keys as you want or buttons. So I'm going to assign another key, and I'm going to hit D, and then hit OK. 
So one thing you have to be careful about with this dialog is you can't hit enter because it'll think you're trying to use the enter key. So when I hit plus here, uh, so I'm going to do move left and I'm going to start with the left key. So I hit left and it fills in left. And now if I hit enter, see, it doesn't actually confirm. It changes to enter. So that's something I have to be careful about. I don't want to hit enter here. I just, I'm going to hit the left key again and hit OK. And then I'm going to add another one, add a key, hit A, which is WSAD for left. And then keep going. I'm going to hit the plus for move up. Do a physical key is up. Plus for uh, move up is also W. And then my last one is a physical key for down. I'm doing down arrow. And then my physical key for down on the WSD side is the S. And so you can assign the keys to whichever ones you want. If you were making like a local two-player game where like two people were using the keyboard at the same time, then you wouldn't want the keys to be the same, right? You would want to separate them. Uh, but that's not what we're doing right now. So if you do need to change these, you can delete the whole section with this trash can. You can delete one key with this trash can. And then you can also edit the keys uh, with this one. So there's a little pencil next to it. So you can edit all of that stuff if you want to. OK, so I'm going to close this. And now, hopefully, all those gross errors will go away. So I'm going to play the scene again. And now I'm not getting any errors. If you see a yellow thing, that's, that's like a warning. So it means it, it doesn't like the style of your code, but it doesn't actually break the game. But now I should be able to move my player. And right now, the player is kind of like stuck up in the top left, and the game doesn't move. But you can see I'm hitting the keys now. It's also very, very small, but that's OK. Um, you can see I'm moving the player around. So the keys are working. Um, so we have a couple more steps, but we're really close to being done with this part of the um, uh, lab. Um, any questions before we move on to the next part of the lab? And don't worry if you haven't done, if you're not, if not everything's not working exactly right, we'll have some time to fix things up at the end. Um, okay, I'm going to keep going, but if you do have questions, uh, let me know or uh, message on Discord. So our next step, uh, we actually already added the player to the scene, so we, we did this step out of order. We set up the input, so now we just have to add the camera. That's the main last thing that we have to do. So in Godot, you can see that uh, there's like a basic way that the scene is rendered, where the zero, the top left is over here. And so we can see our little trees, and we can see our character coming down here. Um, and what Godot does is it uses a camera so that you can change what you see in the game. And that could either be depending on where the player moves or other factors. So right now, the camera view is this like blue square. Um, it's probably kind of hard to see on the projector, but there's these there's this tiny little blue line uh, that shows what the camera view is. And we can actually change this. This is based on the game window. So if you want to change that, you can go to projects and go to project settings. And this is under general. And it's somewhere down in here, but I'm just going to search for it. It's called window. And so it's in display, window. And you can change the width and the height of the window. So this is the default. I usually like to change this to be a little bit smaller. So I usually change this to 512. Uh, but you can use whatever you want. And then there's also a resizable option. I usually turn this off. Um, if, if a player is changing the size of the window, I might not know like what they're looking at. And so to make things easier, I'm just going to turn that off for now because I really want to kind of simplify things as I'm learning to make a game. So I'm going to keep those settings and save. And so now you can see if I run the scene again, the subtle difference, but now the height of my window is, is a little bit smaller. And it's also twice as wide as, as it is tall. Um, so that looks good. So now I'm going to add a camera in to change the uh, view in the scene. And you, you don't have to do it this way. If you want your player to move around independent of the camera, you can control the camera with a script. But one really easy way to make the camera move with the player is just to attach the camera to the player. And so this is a nice uh, component of designing with Godot is we can add 
objects to other objects. So instead of just adding the camera into the scene, I'm going to select the player first and then hit the plus button and type in camera. And we want a camera 2D because we're working in 2D. So I'm going to click create. And now the one thing I have to make sure to do, which I forget to do this all the time, it won't work unless we tell Godot that it is the current camera. It's the current we want it, the camera we want it to use as we render the game. Um, the reason that this exists is because you might have multiple different cameras that you switch to throughout the game. So I'm going to click on the current camera, and I'm going to hit play again. And now, notice that the scene moves with the player. And it's kind of hard to see because it's really small, but you can see my forest is moving, uh, and you know my player is, is walking along. Um, okay. One, a couple of things, so I can zoom the camera. So if I want to zoom in, I can uh, zoom the camera in. Although I think actually if I make it bigger, if I increase a number, I think it'll be bigger. So if I want to zoom in, I can make that those values smaller. So for the zoom, I'll do 0.5 and 0.5. And so for this part of my game, it might be, since I don't have that much going on, it might look better if I zoom in here. Uh, and you know maybe later in on in the game I'll zoom out. Um, a couple other things. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with the camera actually. Um, I'll just show a couple things real quick. So uh, there's a camera limit, and for a scene like this where you can move in all four directions, you don't normally want to have a limit. But for a platformer, you might want to limit the camera from going too low or too high depending on the game. So the limit by default is set to this like really, really large number, so you'll never see the top or bottom of the camera. But if I set this, uh, I'm going to set the top to negative 512 and the bottom to 512 just to demonstrate. If I set limits to the camera, the camera will follow the player, but at a certain point, oh, we can't actually see. I'll have to set it smaller because the trees aren't, there aren't enough trees. Okay, so let's set the limit to something really small. Um, so I'll set the top to negative 100 and the bottom to. And then I'll play this again. So now the camera moves a little bit with the player, but if I go too far beyond the limit, then it stops moving. So I can move right and left now, but it won't follow the player up and down. So depending on the style of the game, that could be a useful thing. And you can also change these limits with your script. Um, so let's reset those. Another thing that we can do is have a drag margin. So if I turn that on, the drag margin means that the, the camera won't follow the player until they get within a certain uh, distance of the edge of the screen. So the drag margin by default is set to 0.2. And so if we set the drag margin on, the player will move within the scene until it gets to kind of the edge, and then it'll, the camera will start to follow the player. So you can kind of recreate these different ways that you would want the camera to work in the scene using these settings. And this is really nice. I used to have to write code to do this, and now it's just built in to get down. OK, so we've added our camera to follow the player around. Um, uh, one little thing I wanted to show really quickly, because this always is a question, but it's not really on here. So one thing that you may have noticed is in this scene, when the player walks over the trees, the player's just like on top of all the trees. And that's because the player is below the trees in the hierarchy. But if you wanted to use the position of the player, what we can do is actually change the type of node. So this is something that Godot uses that can be confusing, is that there's a lot of different nodes that add different functionality. So since I'm using just a default node for the scene, it doesn't pay attention to the positions of my uh, components. But if I right click on this and I change it, I can use something called the Y sort. And this will make, uh, hopefully, will make my player appear to go inside the forest. And what this does is it basically makes whatever is farthest down on the Y or the vertical, that's what's going to appear in front. So when the player kind of goes up here, it's going to be behind the trees. Let's zoom even in more so we can really see this. And then this also depends on the pivot point of the, of the arc. So that's another thing that we may need to change. 
So now my player is behind the tree until it gets to about there, and then it swaps. And you might be like, that's good, but you may want to play with the pivot point. So watch what happens if I take my player and go to the player scene, and I move everything in here up. Now the Y value is at the kind of feet of the player. So if I save this and go back to my scene, now the player won't move in front of the tree until it's a little bit farther down. So depending on how you're designing your game, that might be more realistic. Although this tree seems to be... Some of the trees seem to be kind of ignoring the player. They don't totally get. Um, but you can see most of them are working. I'll have to debug that later. Not sure why these guys in front are ignoring it. I might have like set something by mistake. Anyway, that's something that a lot of people ask about. Um, that it's usually it it only applies depending on what type of game you're creating. Like if you're making a platformer, you probably won't have Y sword on. If you're making an RPG style game, you probably won't have Y sword. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, the one last thing that I'm going to demonstrate is not related to Godot, but more about like doing your homework, which is when we have these labs, basically the homework is just to pr show what you've been working on. So you just want to publish what's called documentation on the open lab. Okay, so the, there's a couple different ways to do that, and I'll go over them as we go over new lessons. I'm just going to do it simple today. I'm just going to take a screenshot of my game and post that on the open lab. So the way to take a screenshot, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And because I'm on a Windows now, I'm only going to demonstrate on Windows. But there is on the class page, um, which is uh, on the Open Lab. Let me go to uh, the info section. And here's MMP270. And I'll go to the Open Lab. So if you go to links here and you go down to documentation, there are just some videos on how to how to take screenshots and how to record videos um, for Windows and for Mac. So there's like simple take a screenshot videos here. Then there's like more complicated taking a recording for Mac and Windows. And then for if you want to do really fancy stuff, you can use OBS, which is what I'm using to record right now. Uh, so those links are there for you guys to review. If you, I assume a lot of you guys already know how to take screenshots, but if you don't, um, you can look at it there. Uh, anyway, so I, what I want to do for documentation is take a screenshot of my work. So I'm going to run my game. And then in Windows, it's actually really easy. I'm going to put my cat over here in the forest. And Windows has this like built-in Xbox game bar thing that lets you record your gaming. And so if I hit the Windows command and then G, it should come up. So yeah. It, this is the Xbox game bar. If you haven't used it before, it'll have this little tutorial. But you just have to make sure that you select the right window first. But whatever window you have selected is what it'll be looking at. So I can get rid of some of this crap I don't need. I don't need any of this stuff. But there's some tools up here under this capture window. There's a little camera, which will take a screenshot. And there's a recording to do a video recording. So for this one, I'm just going to take a screenshot. And so I'll take a screenshot here. And now, if I want to see that screenshot, there's a button that says See My Captures. And I can click on that. And we can see here's my capture. And there's a button that says Open File Location. So I'm going to hit Continue. And that's going to open up my File Explorer. And it's going to be probably like in your videos folder or something like that. So um, if you want to like, you know, move this somewhere else or put it in your game folder or whatever, you can do that. I'm just going to leave it here for now. As long as I know where it is, I can post it on OpenLab. Okay, so now I'm ready to post the documentation of my lab. So for this, I need to go to the OpenLab. I'm going to go back to my browser. Uh, I have the OpenLab open already. I should be logged in. If you're not logged in, just click on the login button up here. And I want to make a new post, so I'm going to click on the plus button here. And I can go to post, or I can just hit the plus button. That's going to default to post. And so now I'm going to create a post for my assignment. So if you've never used WordPress before, you might want to look at this dialog box and go through a little tutorial. I'm going to ignore this. Um, if you've used OpenLab before, you should be familiar with this. If not, uh, it's just a WordPress site. It's relatively easy to use, but I can obviously go over any questions that you might have. 
Um, so it's always going to say like select a category before publishing. So to get rid of this red thing, I'm going to go to categories. And there should be categories for all of the different labs. I kind of change the labs a bit from year to year. Um, so you may not find the exact right one. Uh, but this lab is basically all three of our little apprentice tier labs. So it's the art intro, that was the avatar we made, the Godot lab, and the open lab intro. So we're kind of doing all of these at the same time this semester. Um, so I'm going to click on all of those. Uh, and then now I have a category. I'm going to add a title. I'm going to say uh, my first Godot scene. And so once I add the title, I can add content. And so it's pretty easy to add content. I can just click in here and start typing. I can say here is a screen shot of my first video scene. And if I want to add other types of content, I can click on this little plus button. And there's different suggestions here. If you don't see the suggestion you're looking for, like if I wanted to post some audio, you could type in what you're looking for. Um, but I want to post an image, so I'm going to type an image. And you have a couple of options, an image or a gallery. Image, I just have one image, so obviously that's what I want to use for this. So I'm going to click image. And now I can drag my image on here, or I can use the upload button. So I'm going to click upload. And I'm going to go to where that uh, image was on my desktop. So if you don't remember, um, you could just drag and drop. Uh, but you can also look at what this file path was. So it's uh, in my videos folder, in my captures folder, and here's my game image. So I'm going to click open. And there's my image. You can add a caption if you want. Uh, once you click on the image. Um, but that's pretty much all you need for this first little bit. Uh, if you want to preview the post, you can click on preview and go to preview in a new tab. And here we go. You can see the post. You can see the author, uh, the categories. And you can also, uh, people can comment on it. So I'm going to give you feedback on your posts. Uh, I'll use a private comment to give you feedback. So if I have, you know, that way, you don't have to worry about if you know if you don't want other people to see it, um, but other people can comment on your posts as well. So once you're happy with that, you can click publish, and yeah, just click publish. And this is set up. Sometimes BMCC's stuff breaks, but usually I'll get an email as soon as you publish a post. So you don't need to submit it on Blackboard or anything. I'll just take a look at it. Um, sometimes that doesn't work. So if I don't comment on your post right away. Um, it may be that I didn't get a notification. See if I got a notification. Yeah, I did get a notification. So that's good. Uh, last semester, it didn't really work that well. So that was kind of a problem, but it wasn't the end of the world. Um, anyway, if you want to send your post to somebody or put it on the Discord, it's going to create a permalink here. So if you click on this, that'll take you to that post. And you can copy this. And you can say, you can go to Discord and say, you know, check out my new scene and paste in a link. And so other people can see if you posted something, if you want to share. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So then now the cool thing about this is if I go back to the main page and I go to my, um, my name, my author link down here, you can see all the posts that I've written. Um, if you go to the posts feed here, this is just like all of the posts, although it looks like it's not showing up. Uh, let me make sure this is set up correctly. Uh, let's see, I have to make sure this is in settings, reading, I think. Okay, yes, I did not set this up. Um, homepage is home. Why won't it let me, oh, I have to publish it, okay. So let's go to pages. Here's posts. Let's just publish this. Oh, it won't let me from here. OK. Let's edit it and just publish. And now, if I go to settings, I can choose posts, changes. And so now if I go to posts, OK, so you'll see all of the posts um, that have been posted. And then if you also look at like a specific category, like if I go to Godot intro, it'll show all the Godot. OK. 
I think that is everything. Let's go back to our lab and make sure we did stuff. So we previewed the scene, we documented it, and that's it. Okay, so there's some links down here um, in all the labs to different things that I drew, you know, kind of reference. And so you might look at uh, different things if you want more in-depth stuff, but you don't have to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so uh, I'm going to stop recording. And so we have like another 40 minutes in class. So you guys can go through all these steps and make sure you're up to date with everything. Um, and if you have questions or issues with anything, let me know and I will take a look. Um, I got